Chapter 22, Free Spit. It was only when she looked at her reflection in a shop window that Zoe realised that, like Tina and Sheila, she was also covered from head to toe in dust. She had wondered why passers-by had been giving her funny looks and why children in pushchairs burst into tears when they saw her and were wheeled by their pregnant mothers from her path. Wiping the dust off her little plastic watch, she saw it was nearly lunchtime. Bert's van would be parked outside the school playground, as it always was, frying up his noxious burgers. The dust had gone right down the back of her throat and Zoe was desperately in need of a drink, so she made a short pit stop. Ting! Ah, Miss Zoe! exclaimed Raj. Is it Halloween already? Um, no, <coughs> spluttered Zoe. It's a uh, mufty day at school. You know, where you can wear whatever you like. Raj studied the small, dusty girl. So, forgive me, but what have you dressed as? Dust girl. Dust girl? Yes, dust girl. She is a superhero, you know. I have never heard of her. She is very popular. Dust girl, eh? Hmm. So what is her superpower? Inquired Raj. Genuinely curious. She is very good at dusting, replied Zoe, now desperate for the exchange to come to an end. Well, I must look out for her. Yes, I think they are bringing out a Dust Girl movie next year. It is sure to be a blockbuster, replied Raj, clearly not 100% convinced. People do love to watch someone doing the dusting. I know I do. Raj, please can I have a drink? Of course, Miss Zoe, anything for you. I have got some bottles of water there. Uh, just tap water would be fine. No, no, I insist. Take a bottle from the chill cabinet. Uh, well, thank you. My pleasure, smiled Raj. Zoe made her way from the counter and selected a small bottle of water. She downed most of it, then washed her face clean with the remainder. Instantly, she felt a whole lot better. Thank you, Raj. You are so good to me. You are a very special little girl, Miss Zoe, and not just because you are ginger. Please can you pass me the empty bottle, Miss Zoe? Trampling dust through his little shop, Zoe returned the bottle to Raj and he took it off behind the multicolored plastic curtains to the back. Zoe could hear a tap running and a few moments later, he reappeared to pass the bottle back to her. If you could pop it back in the cabinet, please, he said with a smile, but it's covered in dust and it's got my spit all around the top. And the beauty of the scheme, my friend, is there is no extra charge for the spit, said Raj triumphantly. Zoe looked at the newsagent and then dutifully returned the bottle to where she had taken it from. Goodbye, Raj. Goodbye, uh, dust girl. <laughs> and good luck. Ting. Now Zoe felt a tiny little bit like she was a superhero albeit one whose special power was dusting. However, just like a superhero, she was fighting evil. Powering down the street, a trail of dust behind her, Zoe soon spotted Bert's van. It was parked where it always was, outside the school playground, and there was a line of eager children queuing down the road. Approaching from the roadside, she saw that the van was emblazoned with Bert's Pest Control. That's curious. She thought, Zoe hid behind the defaced and battered school sign and waited until the bell rang for the end of lunch break. She couldn't risk being seen back at school since she was suspended. That could lead to instant expulsion. The bell finally rang and Bert served his final customer, squirting the peculiar dark ketchup onto the distinctly unappetizing looking burger. Zoe scuttled across the road and hid on the other side of the van where it faced onto the pavement. Looking up at the writing, this side, she saw that it read, Bert's Burgers. This is so strange, whispered Zoe to herself. The van said Bert's Burgers on one side and Bert's Pest Control on the other. Zoe stared at the van. The creepy man was only using the same vehicle for catching rats that he did for frying burgers. Zoe was no expert, but was pretty sure the government's food standard agency would take a very dim view of this, 
it was going to result in an angry letter at least. The van's engine started and Zoe scampered around to the back, silently opened the door and leapt inside. She closed it as quietly as she could behind her and lay down on the cold metal floor. Then the engine started up and the van drove off with Zoe hiding inside it.